Hi everyone, today is a perfume video and we are going to be talking about the scents that I like wearing around the holidays. I have a, a selection here that I'm very very happy with and I wear a ton. Um, so I, I wanted to share what scents I really love for around the holidays. And of course I have to start with uh, Coco, uh, Coco by Chanel, the original de Parfum. Um, I believe it was released in the 80s. This is an oldie but a goodie. I have it for, for many years now I've been repurchasing. This is probably third or fourth bottle that I've bought. Um, and this time it's a big one uh, and a refillable one. This is 60 mils. Um, so I guess it's not that huge, but it's uh, a rather powerful scent. It is a soapy, comforting, um, yet spiced scent. Um, there is definite cloves, something like anise is uh, in there. Uh, it is um, very cozy and does have a big vintage flair. If you are a lover of vintage perfumery, I think you will be interested to try it, especially if you are a lover of loud 80s big sense. Um, if Obsession by Calvin Klein was something that you thought was amazing, then try Chanel. This is a more sophisticated um, scent within the same scent family as that. So uh, very spicy, very soapy, and uh, there is, um, as you can see, it's presented to us in a bit of an art deco packaging which i think reflects the spirit of the scent very very well because when i think of it i don't really think 80s what i think about is um great britain in the 20s and 30s art deco flappers um i'm thinking about old um uh, like a a second degree heiress maybe that's not going to inherit the title but will get some of the family money uh, in the 20s or 30s just traveling living life before the world war strikes again uh, second time huh and she has not a care in the world she's sophisticated she's well educated she has she doesn't have to work but she likes being maybe productive and learning new things for me this is such an old school comforting scent that i've purchased it as long as i can remember having perfumes or being able to purchase perfumes i guess um, and it's a must-have for the holidays um, old england uh, this heiress is coming home to the family mansion for mansion for christmas so um <laughs> maybe maybe something like that will brighten up your holidays if you're into um, spicy soapy scents the second uh, fragrance that I have here, actually, I was inspired, first of all, this is Mousse Cravageur from Frederick Mao. Uh, I was very inspired to get this fragrance uh, from a perfume channel that I absolutely adore, and I'm heartbroken that she doesn't post for the last seven years or something like that, a really long time ago she stopped posting. It was Katie Puckrick Smells. I'm not sure what happened to Katie. She probably moved on to bigger, better things. I wouldn't put it past her because she's incredibly talented uh, and very, very likable. Um, not all of us are very likable on the internet, but she was and is probably doing something cool somewhere else. So she had this perfume channel that she, um, um, she posted a lot of videos with very uh, interesting and fun journalistic shorts about each um, of the scents. And she did love Mos Ravageur and she spoke about it a lot at length, I would say. So this inspired me to try it. I tried it in a small format and then I have purchased a full bottle. The bottle is about one third empty at this point. I've used it for one year so far. Uh, and uh, probably is going to last me one or two more years. Uh, this is a winter scent for me. It does appear to me to be a bit of a skin scent, but not because of the longevity, because it is rather long lasting, but it does melt with the skin very well. Um, it has these musk, clean musk facets that are combined very well with um, mulled wine spicy facets. And this creates an incredibly sophisticated uh, perfume, very understated elegant, <laughs> and uh, very understated yet elegant. And uh, there is a, a lot of this intimate flair to it. So to me, this is a wonderful, warm, spicy musk. 
uh, just a beautiful composition, very masterfully blended. Um, if you are a lover of uh, understated yet exceptional um, fragrances, you might really like Mus Ravageau uh, because it is um, a very beautiful offering from the fragrance, ha fra fragrance house. Uh, and I am super happy to have it. Uh, I do plan to use it up. It's it's a very um, comforting scent for me. It's a quiet scent, you know, it's for quiet time. It's for me. It's for personal use. I do think that it's pretty unisex, as is actually Coco, as is most everything of what I'm going to be mentioning today, but uh, definitely spiciness tends to uh, translate well uh, with the uh, male perfumery as well. And then I have a scent here that I've been using for a year now and I've used it last winter and I'm using it this winter so I suspect it's going to last another year or two as well. And here we are talking about another unisex offering. In this case it's Histoire de Parfum um, is the fragrance house and it's 1899 uh, inspired by Hemingway. I'm not sure why specifically Hemingway. I would love to be uh, enlightened with regards to that. But this is a beautiful juniper, uh, somewhat green, um, evergreen sort of scent. Uh, again, there is a, a masculine trait to it for sure. So uh, beware if you don't like juniper, you're definitely not going to like it because it's very juniper heavy. Uh, but there's a very cool freshness to it, um, cool temperature-wise, I mean. And I always feel that this particular scent transports me to a cold winter um, evergreen forest that's covered in snow. Uh, heavy snow that's weighing down the um, plush, bright greenery of the evergreens. There's something incredibly special about this particular scent, and this is the one that I chose to buy from the Histoire de Parfum lineup, although the whole line is obviously absolutely brilliant, and the premise of being inspired by literary, literary and historic figures is incredibly attractive to me. So I like their entire mythology of, of the brand and um, uh, how they market it as well. But this juniper is just incredibly beautiful, well very well constructed and elevated sort of cold winter green. Um, so I would recommend to try if you haven't and if you are interested in that sort of a fragrance. I have a new offering, um, new for me obviously, not new in general, uh, from Hermes, which I did not expect to love as much as I do. Uh, and it's Ademandarin Ampre. Uh, Eau de Cologne from the Hermes uh, Eau de Cologne lineup. I bought two, they came together and one of uh, one of them is the rhubarb one, uh, Eau de Rhubarb I think, and this one is the amber mandarin one. And holy crap, I, amber is not my favorite um, note. I don't generally tend to enjoy very amber centered fragrances. Amber is usually a good supporting note for me, but here, the way they combine it with a very authentic mandarin smell is absolutely brilliant for the holidays. Holidays do tend to inspire me to think about warm citruses. Now, warm citruses isn't something that's very commonplace. Usually citrus fragrance, citrus-based fragrances are fairly lightweight, more spring and summer, and more lighthearted uh, without any weightiness to it. Um, here we have this grounding amber that is tying down that very authentic mandarin smell, which creates this warm citrus sensation, which is just absolutely perfect for the holidays, uh, for warm uh, mulled wine, which the spices haven't been added to yet, or maybe a sangria, um, New Year's sangria or something like that. It is absolutely charming. I do like it and I do think that it's an incredibly well constructed fragrance. It lasts about three to four hours max, so don't expect a lot of longevity out of the Eau de Cologne. I really like the packaging. I like the scent. I even like the short wear because this is a scent that either you have to update or renew through the day or you can wear it in the morning and then transition to something else in the afternoon or in the evening without having any crossover, which I actually think is quite uh, quite uh, comfortable for somebody who really likes perfumes and likes to um, 
wear different ones through the day, uh, aka like myself, but I, I know that not everybody's a fan of that. So if you're looking for huge sillage, if you're looking for incredible longevity, not not this one, not this. But if you want a very straightforward yet masterfully simple, minimalistic, very holiday scent that is citrus based, I would definitely look at the Mandarin Ember. Yeah, Mandarin Ambre. Uh, at the Caline from Hermes. And I think you are going to be not disappointed because this one is hard to dislike. It's really like it's very simple. Um, in terms of its note formulation, but a very effective bullseye for me. Uh, lastly, we have the fifth element of this, and it is going to be a fragrance that everybody knows, and everybody probably has, or a lot of people have, and a lot of people wear. And we're talking about Dior Hypnotic Poison here. This is Eau de Toilette, 50 mils. I purchased it about a couple months ago, and interestingly, it's about half empty already. I've been wearing a ton of it. Um, it. It is a good winter scent. If you are familiar with the scent of Play-Doh, which will never leave my mind, <laughs> I had a, um, a kid who was absolutely um, very fond of Play-Doh. Not anymore. He grew out of it, but he used Play-Doh a lot. Play-Doh was everywhere in my house. You could find it in most bizarre crevices where you'd be surprised a two or three-year-old could reach. Um, but here we are, and anytime I smell hypnotic poison, I am thrown back into that time of my life when my child was very young. Um, so there is an almond, marzipan, vanilla sort of situation here. Um, it is rather creamy. It, it is gentle. It's like a hug. Um, to me, you know, this is not a scent that is incredibly um, sexy or good for like going out or a party or something loud and grand. For me, this is a scent that you wear a small amount of in the intimate, cozy atmosphere for yourself. So, well, mo a lot of my perfumes are that because that's the kind of perfumery I like, but very cozy scent if you like the marzipan kind of um kind of sensation because that's what it's really trying to convey here uh, we don't have much else that is transpiring loudly in this scent apart from this almond and play-doh uh, scent it wears really nicely uh, pretty tenacious I would say if you like a good sillage you can over apply it for sure and it probably won't be a huge issue um, but for me, this is a very comforting scent. I've owned this before years ago and I haven't purchased it or worn it for many years. So this is a bit of a throwback for me. And for me, a very cozy cashmere socks and uh, hand knitted blanket sort of scent. But I do understand that probably for different people, it can create different sensations. The creaminess, the coziness, the smoothness of it, um, and the throwback to my memories of my son being very little. Um, are really what's valuable here for me. So these are the five scents that I keep out right now. This is my sort of um, holiday rotation, the, the, the scents that I've chosen for holidays this year. And I think they're absolutely beautiful. I'm super happy with my current selection. I wear just these basically because that's why I pulled them. Um, and I would say just a really happy time of the year for most people. Uh, and if you are a lover of fragrances, you probably have fragrances that are holiday specific for you. If so, tell me what fragrances do you wear during the holidays? What do you prefer? What do you pull for? Um, do you have holiday specific scents or are you a one scent year round kind of gal or, or guy? Um, and uh, let me know if you've tried any of the ones that I have here. You probably did because pretty much all of them are relatively popular. Um, and uh, write down below what you felt about uh, this selection and these particular scents that you've tried before. I'm always curious to know. That's it for today. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Good luck and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.